In this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of Visio selection handles or you know, the handles that allow you to manipulate the shapes in different ways. So let's start by collapsing the shapes window to get out of the way. And the general rule in Visio is, let's see, click on a shape and pull on the blue things. And that's all there is to it as far as handles go. Now the handles aren't always blue, they have a few different colors as we'll see in a minute. but that's generally the way you operate. You know, if you, you haven't clicked on anything, click on it and just start tugging and see what happens. Now, circ there's a class of shapes called 2D shapes, which this ellipse belongs to. And 2D just means the handles, the selection handles, allow you to m manipulate it in two dimensions, the width and the height. And you can see we can do that quite easily. Uh, excuse me while I go into text edit mode. I can quickly adjust the width and height of the shape and we can even do both at the same time by pulling on corner handles. Now here's a tip if you hold down the control uh, the shift key while pulling on a control handle you can do both at the same time and not preserve the aspect ratio. Without the shift key the width to height ratio is preserved. Now if I draw a shape with the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool it's going to be a 2D shape. By default it's got these eight handles around the edges and the rotation which we'll talk about in a second. A lot of the network shapes and flowchart shapes are 2D shapes. Interesting thing about the network shape is that even if you pull on the midpoint handles the aspect ratio is maintained because the shape designer thought well there's no reason for the user to go and squish my beautiful PC shape like like that so the aspect is always preserved no matter which handle you pull on. Now shapes have rotation handles that you get to by mousing over this lollipop up here and you can see we can easily rotate the shape and it's not so clear on the network shape but you can actually change the rotation point as well so let's click on the the rectangle that we just drew and when we mouse over that lollipop this little rotation point shows and Visio tells you that's the center of rotation. You can actually click on that and drag it way out here and rotate the rectangle about a different point. So now we've talked about 2D shapes. That means there must be 1D shapes, right? And 1D shapes aren't so concerned about their width and height. They're concerned about their endpoints. And a good place to start is with a line. You can see that it's only got two handles. And there's another one hidden underneath we'll just get rid of. It's only got two handles. And if I mouse over that and hold on a second, it says move the endpoint and move the endpoint. And you'll notice that they're a little bit different color. The blue square that's white in the middle is the begin point, and the blue square that's blue in the middle is the end point. This is important for structuring diagrams such that uh, a higher level or a previous step in a flowchart is connected with this begin point and the end point goes somewhere else. Not so important right now for this discussion we just want to learn how to manipulate shapes. Now the arrow shape is also a 1D shape and again the only, what's important about 1D shapes are where they start and where they end and not really how long they are or what angle they're at because by specifying a begin and an end we get a length for free and we get an angle for free. We don't really have to worry about it. Now unlike the line this arrow shape actually has two height handles that allow us to change the thickness of the arrow, which is also a nice feature. But not every single 1D shape has those handles. Now, this shape was a connector that was created using the connector tool. And connectors have, in addition to the 1D begin and end handles, have a few special handles in between that allow you to adjust their joints. As you can see here, these two boxes were connected using a connector and they ran around this other box. If I don't like that bend, maybe I can make it a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, so that there's more space maybe for some other shapes here, like this. Another thing that's interesting about 1D shapes is that their end, these end handles can glue to connection points. Some shapes have connection points built in. This box came from the block stencil and we could drag out another PC and these all have connection points that you don't see until you say connect click on this connection point tool then you can see the selected shape has some little X's on them. I don't 
don't know if you can see it very well on the network shape, there's one in the middle. But you also see them as you drag a 1D shape handle close to a shape. You can see it shows up there. Here there's five of them around the edges and one in the middle. And I can glue the arrow to that. Now you'll see what happens to the 1D end point end handle. It turns red when it's glued, and that means it'll follow the box around. Now you can see our arrows behind the box, so let's right click the arrow and say bring to front so that we can always see the arrow. So red means glue and 1D endpoints are very good at gluing. There's another little case for glue that I want to show you, but first we'll need to turn on the rulers. Now the rulers show around the edge of a drawing page and tell you how big things are, but you can pull these little purple things out of here called guides. And guides can just be moved up and down. It's sort of like shape handles, but the, the entire guide can be clicked and moved. And guides don't print, but you can glue things to them. If we have 2D shapes, well, let's just use this, this network shape here. We can put it right up against there, and you'll see that its handles turn red. That means it's glued to the guide. I can glue it to the middle, and you'll see only the middle handles turn. Red. What's neat about that is you can create a whole column of shapes that all move with the guide, like that. And you can glue, of course, 1D shape handles to guides as well, so the end goes back and forth. I could glue the whole shape to it. You'll see this, this computer is actually glued to two guides. It's glued to the left on its right side and its middle, so you can move two guides to move that one up and down or back and forth. So glue is red, 1D and 2D handles are blue normally, but they turn red when they're glued. And an interesting case for 1D shape handles is the network rack equipment. You can see we've got a nice rack with some network equipment in it. And if I pull the shape out, you see it's actually a 1D shape, which doesn't make a lot of sense because it's very box-like graphics. But this was done because, you can see all those X's that show up as I get near the, the rack? Network equipment is created as 1D shapes because their ends can be snapped into network racks that have lots of connection points on them. You can see there's connections points all up and down this rack. And when this piece of equipment is glued to the rack shape, I can move the rack shape and everything stays glued, so I don't have to select everything to move it every single time. I can just move the rack. So that's an interesting application of 1D shape handles and connection points. Now, when the width and height handles, or the begin and end handles, aren't enough to configure your shape, some shape designers have added yellow control handles to shapes. Now you can see this is a 1D arrow. I can move it around like this, but it has these little yellow diamonds here that allow me to further configure the shape of the arrow. I can just pull on them, move them around, and change the shape of this arrow. If I change the length, everything stays nicely proportioned. These don't stretch around. And if you're not sure what a control handle is for, you can always pause over it and see if there's a tooltip that shows up. So this says modify the arrowhead shape. This little cross has two handles on the edges. They're constrained to stay on their very edge, so you don't have to worry about them flying all over the place. So I can make kind of a stubby, stubby cross. And those stay. Everything stays put once I've configured it. A lot of shapes, such as network shapes, shapes where the, the text is designed to be outside of the graphic and not on top of the graphic, a lot of shapes have an extra control handle that allows you to move the text around. This is handy for just repositioning the text without having to use Visio's built-in text positioning tools. You don't have to switch tools, you just click, pull on the control handle. And it's also nice for moving the text out of the way of some incoming connectors. If you've, you know, if there's a lot of connectors to this PC shape, you can just move the text off to some free area. Another interesting network related shape that has control handles is the Ethernet shape where you can actually pull on these yellow handles and put either remove or pull extra connections out of the shape. 
and these can actually even glue. So we've got yellow diamonds that can actually glue to network shapes and the yellow diamond turns to a red diamond in this case. So again, glue is red. If we're editing individual shapes, we can use the pencil and the line tools to edit vertices. So we've got a triangle here and when I select, on, select it using the pencil tool, I can actually click on individual vertexes and pull those around. And these are just little teeny dots. First I just click on it once to turn it red and then I can drag it around. I can do the same thing with the box here. If I use the pencil tool, a few more handles show up at the midpoints of each line and those allow me to change the arc of each shape. And that's because the line tool can only draw lines, but the pencil tool can draw lines and arcs. So you can see I'm drawing shapes. So the pencil tool allows you to, ah, trying to close it, do both arcs and vertices, whereas the line tool only allows you to edit vertexes. The last bunch of handles I want to talk to talk about are sub-selection handles inside of groups. So let's zoom in a little bit. Here I've got three individual PC shapes and I copied them and then I grouped them together into one shape so I can move them all together. You can see they're sort of grouped as a 2D shape with the eight handles and the rotation handles and all that stuff. But what if I wanted to edit something inside here? Say, say I wanted to change the color of one of these shapes. Well, if I select the the whole group and I change the color, but that everything changes and I don't want that, I just want to change one. So what I can do is select a group once by clicking and then click again on a subshape. Now I can manipulate just that shape. And you'll see that the handles, they're the normal 2D handles that we're used to seeing, but they're gray now. And there's an outline showing that they belong inside this group. So when I'm doing this, I'm manipulating a subshape. I can hit escape or just click away in some blank part of the drawing and reselect this group and you can see it's still grouped together. I didn't have to destroy the group to edit something inside of the group. So that's pretty cool. Again, just look for the, the lighter gray handles and then some sort of dash line to remember that you're inside of a group. Now these PC shapes themselves are, are groups, but if I try to click again, you'll see nothing happens and that's because the shape designer locked the subselection of subshapes inside of this shape. They said this shape should behave as a single shape. We don't want users accidentally subselecting individual bits all the time. So it actually allows you to work faster. It's more fluid and smooth by locking that subselection because it is easy to kind of forget that you're subselecting and move stuff around and all of a sudden your groups look pretty funny. So that's the discussion of shape handles. There's quite a bit there, but again, just select things and then pull on the, well, pull on the blue, yellow, or red things, and you should be able to edit your shapes. And you can always hit undo if you don't like what you did. Talk to you later.